So hello. So we've got uh, our first question is June twenty fourteen. Question one. So I think I'm this is question one. And I need to that's better, right? So, let's do this. This is our question, right? And the question asks us, where is the graph decreasing? So, let's put in a few things here. So, we've got a ruler, right? So, right here, if I've got this as my main point. And now I've got a few details from, from here to here. The graph is increasing. And from here to here, the graph is decreasing. Now they've asked us to find it where it's decreasing. So let's work with this area from here, from here to here. Now what are these points? This is between two and a half, uh, between two and three is two and a half, and between five and six is five and a half. So anything that defines that range between 2.5 and 5.5 .5 is where our solution lies, which would be answer choice, answer choice three. So we've got question two. And uh, we are told that the Jemison family kept a log of the distance they traveled during a trip as represented by the graph below. During which interval was their average speed the greatest? Now, from previous classes, we know that uh, speed is equal to distance divided by time. So they're asking us where is the speed the greatest? That is the question. So we can find the slope for various spaces. We know 110 minus 40 is 70, and 2 minus 1 is 1. So the speed over here is 70 miles per hour, right? Then if we did the same thing over here, we would have 70 divided by 2, so 35. So each time we are taking two points and trying to make a right angle triangle, and then we are changing, finding the change in y and the change in x, and whenever we divide it, we end up getting the slope. So the slope is delta y divided by delta x. That's what we are working with in each case. So if I did this, 230 minus 180 is 50, and 6 minus 4 is 2. So here the speed is 25. Then let's try this one. From 230 to 350 is 120, and from 6 to 8 is 2. So over here it's 60. And then the last case is 40, 390 minus 350, and 10 minus 8 is 2. So 40 divided by 2 is 20. So where is it the greatest? That's over here. So the first hour to the second hour is a solution. Answer one. So our next question is uh, 10 June 2014, question three. So we've got to draw the graph of y is equal to the square root of x minus one. Now, we have to plot this, remember. 
So whatever you do, you work it on a calculator or you use any software like Ludesmos maybe. Remember that we have to plot, we have to draw. The Regents exam will want you to draw this. So you have to draw, right? So there are various ways. I'm gonna use a simple tool right over here. So I'm gonna use Desmos and attach this file. Let's just plug this in. And uh, this is the shape of our graph, right? Let me align it. There we go. So that's the shape of our graph, the square root x minus 1. And we have a table right here to work with. Right? So on your graph, you plot these points, like this is negative one, this is positive one, this is positive two, and so on. And you have to plot this. Remember, we have to plot. Plotting is what, what is needed. So on your axes, we'll take points like zero, one, two, and one, two, three, and negative one, and then we'll plot these points. So at two, it's uh, 0 0.44414. At one, it's zero. And at zero, it's negative one. So if we plot those, we get these points. And then over here, we'll get something like this. So when you plot this, you get a graph of this nature. Right? So that's what they are looking for. We can use the calculator in your regents exam you're gonna use this, okay? So how would you plot on your calculator? You would go to, uh, this is your screen. And below the screen, you'll see this function y is equal to. So that's where you'll put your graph, square root x minus one. And then in the corner of the screen, uh, on this end, you have graph and above it you have tables. So those are the tools you're going to use to graph on your calculator. All right, so we've got question so four. We've got this uh, question, and, uh, question we have to four. do. And uh, we have this information. This is what right? the, the vertex of the parabola represented right? by fx. That's so coordinates to negative one. Find the coordinates of the vertex of the parabola defined by gx is equal to fx. So we've got uh, two. Explain how you arrived at your answer. So if we plotted uh, the fx, we plotted this graph. we'll end up getting this shape. This is what we end up getting, right? This is what we end up getting. This is our shape. And we have this point, two negative one, which they've stated to us. This is our point they're referring to, two negative one. Right now, they're saying if I translate it, so let's use a blue pen. So, this is moving the graph. So, if I put x minus 2 in all of these right here, in place of x, I put in x minus 2. So, what will gx become? gx starts looking like this, right? x minus 2 squared. In place of the x, I'm putting x minus 2, minus 4, x minus 2 plus 3. Now if I plot this graph, this is what I get. So I end up getting, I'll place it over here so that we can compare. Okay, so this is what we get, right? Now they're saying what is happening to this point 
the minimum turning point. This is what we are looking at. Now, what has happened to this point? It's come over here, right? So from 2, negative 1, it moved to 4, negative 1, right? So whenever we have this in parentheses, if there's a negative, we move all x coordinates by plus 2. So if it's negative, we'll plus 2. If it was positive, we'll subtract 2. So see how the x coordinate has moved from 2 to 4. It's adding 2. So that's our solution. So this is our graph. x minus 2 whole squared minus 4 times x minus 2 plus 3. So our answer will be 4, negative 1. And you can describe your answer either by stating this or you say that it is a translation in the x-axis by positive 2 units. Okay? Awesome. So our next question, number 5, just about we are working on. Right, so I'll paste the question right here. Let's see what we got. Uh, the question is right here. On the set of the axes below, draw the graph of y is equal to negative 3 fourth x plus 3. That's our question. Right? Now, there are various ways we can use the graphing tool. But I'm going to take uh, the liberty to plot this graph right now. Let's plot it. Let's see what we get. Right? So let's make a table. Let's keep it simple. Let's take values for x. Right? And let's find our values for y. So I'll use uh, negative 4. I'll use 0. And I'll use 4. The reason why I'm using multiples of 4 is because when I multiply a fraction of 4 by 4, it's just going to cancel and it's going to help me get my solutions really easy. So let's start with the first value, x is negative 4. Okay, so let's put in the negative 4. Plus 3. Right, so let's erase that. That should be a 3. Now see, these two 4s will cancel, right? So that's why whenever you see a fraction, use values that will multiply into that table so that it's easy for you to cancel it off. And then the negative times the negative will give me a positive. So that's a plus 3, plus 3. So I get a 6, right? Then let's put x as 0. So I'll get y is equal to negative 3 fourth times 0 plus 3. So anything times 0 is 0 plus 3 is 3. And then let's put x as 4. y is equal to negative 3 fourth times 4 plus 3. So this cancels. So you get negative 3 plus 3 to 0. And you can plug all these in your calculator again. So this is what I get. Let's plot them. Right? I've got a grid, so let's draw. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I got these points, so I can easily draw my line. So at negative four, it's six. So up here, at zero, it's three. And at 4 at 0. So let's draw a line. Let's draw a line.
So if I were to draw my line, this is what I would get. So that's my solution. There you go. That's my line. Y is equal to negative 3 fourth x plus 3. And now we want to test the second part. They're saying is the point 3 comma 2 a solution to the equation. So let's see if 3 comma 2, where would 3 comma 2 lie? 3 comma 2 is up here. This is the point we are looking at. Right? Is this on the line? What can you see? Is it on the line? No. So our solution is no. It does not. Or it is not a solution of the equation. It is not a solution of the equation. Okay. All right, so we have this question. Now there is a build company that is considering building a manufacturing plant. So that's our uh, motive objective. They determine the weekly production cost at site A to be this function AX is equal to 3X squared while the production cost at site B is BX is equal to 8X plus 3 where x represents the number of products, so that's x in hundreds, and ax and bx are the production costs in hundreds of dollars. Graph the production, again, they've given you a grid. You can use your calculator tool, or you can use your, uh, uh, table, you can use a third tool, which is Desmos to solve. So all three will help you get your uh, solution. Remember, in the exam, you'll need this and this. You will not have Desmos. So rely heavily on uh, these two tools, right? These two functions on your calculator. And that way, you can get your, uh, your graph. So let's uh, draw the graph. This is what I got. So this is my solution for the graph, right? So they just want the positive side. Like if you noticed, they don't need the negative side. So you literally do not need all of this, right? So you're drawing it from here if you notice and this is your uh, your solution right this is your graph where do they where do where do the two graphs intersect at 3 and 27 so that's a solution right so our axes are given uh, number of products in the hundreds and the cost is in hundreds of dollars right so where do they meet 300 products and 2700 dollars that's where our solution is And then there's this last part which says like uh, if they were to use 200 products, if they were to make 200 products, which would be here, sorry, two, let's fix that. So 200 products. Now, which company should they use? A or B? Which one's giving me, which is costing me cheaper? A or B, the blue graph or the green graph? Which is cheaper? So this one is 
our first cost, right? This is our first cost. So we know this is this much, and then we will have this one over here. So B is more expensive than A. So which one should you choose? I would choose A, right? For 200 products, choose A. All right, next question. The value of the x-intercept for the graph 4x minus 5y is equal to 40. So this graph, the line is given. And now they've given us four options. So one easy way is just go to your calculator, enter this graph. And you may have to enter it because the graph automatically gives you this option. So let's divide 5 with every term. So, and why am I doing that? So that I can get y is equal to something. So let's divide 5 by every term. So I'll end up getting minus y, 4x over 5, and 40 divided by 5 is 8. So now I can get rid of uh, the 4x over 5, or however you want to do it, as long as you can isolate y is equal to something that's going to help you solve. So let's add y on both sides. So I get 4x over 5 is equal to 8 plus y. And then I need y, so subtract 8 on both sides. So my final graph that I want to plot is 4 fifth x minus 8. Right? So if I plot that graph, this is what I end up getting so x-intercept where does this graph cut the x-axis right that's what we are trying to find out so right here at 10 x-intercept Graph cuts the x-axis. So it cuts at 10, answer choice 1. Okay, so now we need a graph that shows this relationship where y is 3 more than half of x. So let's translate this. y is 3 more than half of x. Right? This about it. See, the advantage of translating is means equal. That's what I get. More than means add. Right? Half of x multiply again. Half of x is half times x. So 3 more than half of x. So we got our equation. Now we can uh, plot it. Right? So which graph shows this relationship? So I can put in values. Let's just put in values and do it really quick. You can even use the calculator or you could uh, just plug in values. So again, as I stated before in a question that when you have a denominator, what values of x would you like to choose something that are multiples of two? So let's put two. Now if I put x as zero, Right, what do I get? Zero for this part. I'll get this y is equal to three plus half times zero. This becomes zero, so three plus zero is three. So my first value is three at x is zero. Right? And then when I put in uh, two, I'll get three plus one, which is four. Right? So let's look for these coordinates. Let's look at answer choice three, for example. This is zero on the x. This is one, two, three. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So at zero, it's three, we are getting that point. And then at two, we are getting four. So at two. At 
two we are getting four which we aren't getting in this graph right let's look at uh, some of the other graphs let's look at number two so we are getting zero and we are getting three right that's one two three so we are getting our three let's put in another value maybe negative one negative two let's put negative two and see if I get a two let's plug in a negative two right so let's plug in negative two this becomes three minus one which is two so am I getting this point so my answer choice is number two so we've got this question August 2014 question 3 let fx is equal to negative 2x squared and gx is equal to 2x minus 4 again you can use the calculator to show these two graphs then they have an axis so you've got to draw right draw the graphs of y is equal to fx and y is equal to gx and then they find they're saying like uh, use where the graphs intersect right so where fx is equal to gx that's what they're looking for so let's place uh, the solution for this So this is what I get. All right, this is my solution. So you can find the point of intersection where they cut, where the two graphs cut. That would be right here and right here. So a solution is one negative two and negative two negative eight. So we have Jan. 2015 question one so they're saying there's a linear equation we know it's a straight line right and it contains these two points so these are on the line right so let's see if I uh, add these two points to a graph what do we get so we get this right so we've got these two points right here. This is three. This is three and this is 11. So this is our first point. And this one is negative two and one. So let's get a straight line passing through these points. So if I were to draw a straight line, this is what I would get, right? Now I got my straight line. Now I'm looking for which points exist, two, one, two, six, two, four, two, nine. Let's test them. So at two, this is one, this is two. Where does this meet the graph at this point? That's nine. The solution is two nine. Answer choice four. Okay. So we have this question. A polynomial function contains the factors x, x minus two, and x plus five. So remember this term factors. Factors means like uh, multiples. Okay. For example. What are the factors of 12? What numbers make up multiply to give you 12? 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, right? And then it repeats to 6 times 2 and 12 times 1. So all of these are the factors of 12, right? That's the term factors. Let's remove this multiples because... Um, Multiples can also mean the, the values you can multiply by 12. So let's call it uh, factors. So now if I multiply all these three things, what do I get? X, X minus 2, X, minus, X plus 5. 
So if I multiply two x's, what do I get? I get an x square. Then if I multiply this extra x by it, I get an x cubed. So I'm looking for a cubic function. Which one is that? Right here. Cubic function. Right? This one is also a cubic function. Right? So these two are our cubic functions. Now we've got to determine which one will be our solution. So to determine our solution, we'll equate each part to zero. So x is zero, x minus two is zero. So that means x is two. And x plus five is equal to zero, which is x is equal to negative five. So let's look for this. x is equal to zero. Where do we see it in both graphs? We see it here. We see it here. Then we want x is equal to 2. Where do we see that? We see that here. We see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We see 5 over here. Right? We see a 2. We see a 0. We see a 0. So it's answer choice 1. 1 only. Answer is 1. So we have June 2015 question one. The graph below shows a jogger's speed during her 20 minute jog around her neighborhood. Which statement best describes what the jogger was doing during the nine to 12 minute interval? So what's happening between nine and 12 right here? So her speed is six, right? So does that mean that she's at rest or is, is, is she jogging at one speed or is she standing still, right? So speed is 6. So if her speed is 6, does that mean she's standing still or is she still jogging, right? So she can be standing still if her speed is 6, right? Is her speed increasing? So this is out. Is her speed increasing? No. Is her speed decreasing? So her answer choice is 4. She's traveling at constant speed or constant rate because the speed did not change. Okay, so we've got this uh, question. Morgan can start wrestling at age 5 in Division 1. He remains in that division until his next odd birthday. So what are odd numbers? One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and so on, right? So he's starting at five when he's in the wrestling team. So his next odd birthday will be at seven, and then nine, and then eleven, and then thirteen, and then fifteen, right? So they're saying every odd birthday he is required to move up to the next level, division level. So at five, a, let's just show it in terms of a so at age 5, he's at level 1. At age 7, he's at level 2. Division. Right? At 9, he's at 3. At 11, he's at 4. At 13, he's at 5. At 15, he's at level 6. Right? So let's look at this. So at age 5, he starts at uh, level 1. And then at age 7, he should jump to level 2. Then to level 3 at age 9. At age 11, he should jump to level 4. And at age 13, he should love, le jump to level 5. So we've got uh, this graph, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's right here. Answer choice 1. Because as he reaches 7, he jumps to the next level. So it shouldn't be inclusive in that list. Remember, shaded means included. Unshaded means not included. Okay. So answer choice one. There we go. All right. So this is our next question. June uh, 2015, question three. So Joey enlarged a three inch by five inch photograph on a copy machine. He enlarged it four times. The table below shows the area of the photograph after each enlargement. So enlargement is here, area is here. So every time you're enlarging it, 
right? So that's what we have. Now they're saying what is the average rate of change of the area from the original photograph, which is right here, to the fourth enlargement, which is right here. So remember, it's like working with the slope. The slope is also a rate. So what do we do to find the slope or the rate? We find the vertical change and we divide the horizontal change. So let's solve this. So let's see how much is it increasing or from 15 on the vertical to 36.6. So the increase is this, right? This is how much it's changing. And on the horizontal axis, it's changing from 0 to 4, which is simple, right? So let's put in these values. What is 36.6 minus 50? So if we simplify this, we get 21.6. And then we divide 21.6 divided by 4, and we get 5.4 square inches per enlargement. So what's our solution right here, answer three? So I've got June 2015, question four. And uh, we want to find out which graph is representing this function. And uh, we can obviously use a calculator, right? And see which one works with this. So what I did was I drew the graph And I'm going to paste them here and let's see which one works out. So let's do the first one. So if I do the first one, this is the first one. Does this work? Is this the same? Look at where it cuts over here, right? And then it comes down over here at negative 60 and stuff. So it's not one, right? Let's paste the second one and let's see how that works. So the second one's right here. And our equations are written here, if you notice, right here. So this, the first one is I, the second one is right here, right? So we have x minus 3, x squared plus 2, plus x minus 2. Now let's see where this bends. So it, around this area, even around this area, and then it cuts at 6, cuts at 6, right? It intersects at negative 2, intersects at negative. So answer choice 2 is one of the answers. We know that, right? So let's uh, see the third option. So this is number 2. Let's check what the third option is. So a third option is right here. I was going to place it in a different orientation, but then I wanted to keep the, the orientation the same. Now look at this one. This cuts up here, right, at zero. But uh, that's not where it curves in the graph that we need. So our answer choice should be answer two only. So now we've got uh, June 2015, question six. An online electronics sell, store must sell at least $2,500 worth of printers and computers per day. Each printer costs $50 and each computer costs 500. The store can ship up to a maximum of 15 items per day. 
right? So there are some situations over here. Now we don't know how many printers there are, and nor would do we know how many computers there are, right? So can we use P and C for it, right? So if each printer costs fifty dollars, how much revenue will we generate from that? Fifty p, and from the Computers, if you're selling each for 500, how much revenue can you generate? 500 C, right? And they're saying that this should be at least 100. What do you understand by this term, at least? At least means that that's the least amount. So it can be greater or it can be at the least 2,500. So should I put this sign for it, right? At least 2,500. And then they're saying that the maximum number of items you can ship is 15. So that means the most you can get is 15, most items. So that means you've got to ship less than it, right? So less than or equal to 15, and that is P plus C. Now you get two equations, right? C is on this side because you can write your equations in terms of C and P, like X and Y, right? So if I write my equations, what would they look like? So in equations, we remove the inequality. So this is what becomes 50P plus 500C is equal to 2500. Now to make C the subject, we want C all alone. So let's divide 500 by everything. So this cancels, we'll get 5 over here, and here we'll get 1 tenth, right? So your equation is 1 tenth P plus C is equal to 5. But we want C, so let's move the 1 tenth P to the other side. So this is one equation. Now on your calculator, you've got a Y and an X, so play with it, right? So write your equation in terms of Y and X and plot this graph, you'll get a straight line. Do the same thing with the second one. You've got P plus C is equal to 15. Make C the subject, subtract P from both sides, so you'll get 15 minus P. Right, again, do the same thing. Make this Y so that you can work with your calculator. On Desmos, you can enter C and P as you would like to. So let's plot this graph. Now if I take value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then let's see what we get on this side. So if I put in 0, I'll get 15, and then if I put in 10, I'll get 5. So let's put in those values, 1, 2, 3, sorry, let's move this a little lower. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay. So let's start with equation two. Now let's put P as zero and find C. So if I put P as zero over here, fifteen minus zero is uh, fifteen. And let's put 15. If I put P as 15, I'll get 0. So let's go a little further. So we'll get this point, And we'll get this point. And let's draw a line through it. So this is our first line. Now let's do work with the second line. So we've got this as our second line, right? So let's put in zero again for P and find C. So if I put zero over here, anything multiplied by zero is zero plus five gives me five. And then let's put in 10 so that it's easy to work with. Negative 1 tenth times 10 is negative 1, plus 5 is 4. Let's plot these. So at 0, it's 5. 
and at 10 it's 4 so let's draw this line So these are our two lines, right? Now, for the first equation, we want the greater than region. That means we need all of this, right? This is what we want, this section, greater than it. So everything over here, right? And for the second one, we want less than it less than or equal to. So where do these sections intersect? Right here. This is the common region for both of them. So this is our <coughs> region that we are looking for right here. So that's how we would solve the inequalities. All right, so we've got uh, June 2015. Question seven. So we've got to plot this, right? <clears throat> so now we've got this question. A footballer attempts to kick a football over a goalpost. So that's our question. So that's the question. The path of the football can be modeled by the function hx is equal to negative 120. 225 x squared plus 2 thirds x squared. x is the horizontal axis or the distance from the kick and hx is the height of the football above the ground when both are measured in feet. On the set of axes below, you're supposed to plot this graph over the interval 0 to 150. So let's plug in values as always as we do, right? <clears throat> and then we or we copy down the graph on our uh, on our calculator and we'll end up getting a graph so let's see what's the image for it so this is the image i get for the graph <clears throat> so you can uh, take values from the uh, from the calculator and create a table right for x and hx right i can see three points on this graph but you can get more points remember to draw a curve you at least need a minimum of five points right this is your minimum so right here you would need more and then they say the goal post so we've drawn the the graph determine the vertex of hx that's the next part so the vertex is where the curve turns right so what's the vertex 75 and 25 interpret the meaning of this vertex in the context of the problem so what is 75 75 is the horizontal distance from the kick and 25 is the height of the football above the ground so if this were your situation 25 is this and 75 feet is this. So you've got to kick the ball like this in a par parabola in that shape. And that's how you get the maximum height. Now they say the goal post is 10 feet high and 45 feet from the kick. Will the ball be high enough to pass over the goal post? Justify your answer. So look at where are we at 45 yards from the kick. So this is 50, right? So 45 is over here. And 10 feet high is up here. So 10 is up here. So are we higher than this level? Is what they are asking you. 45 and 10. So are we higher than that? We are definitely higher when we are at 45. So yes, it will pass the goal or it will be high enough to pass over the goal.
All right, next question. So this is August uh, 2015. Question one. Right? Let's see what this question is asking us. So our line will be right here. Let's plug the line. Right? So you got this line. So what can we say? Now this is Jonah. And this is Rogan. Right? So which one is steeper? Let's see. Now let's go through the answer choices and determine which one is correct. Rowan's graph has a steeper slope than Jonah's. Uh, we see that Jonah's graph is steeper than Rowan's, so that would be choice three. Answer three. So we've got this question, August 2015, question two. Firing a piece of uh, pottery in a kiln that takes place at different temperatures for different amounts of time. The graph below shows the temperatures in a kiln while firing a piece of pottery after the kiln is preheated at 200. So that's right here. That's our initial temperature. During which time interval did the temperature in the kiln show the greatest average rate? So basically they're saying, where is it the steepest? Right? So there are various ways. I could just put a ruler and see where I will get the steepest line. Right? That's what we are looking for. Or you can use the slope formula. Remember this change in y over change in x, right? And each time determine where is it the steepest. So let's use the line method. So if I placed a ruler and I drew line at lines at various places, let's see where do I get the steepest line. So this is between the first two, right? And as I keep going you'll notice that the line becomes less steep, right? So where is it the steepest? It's the first set of points, right? The first two set of points, the first line that we have between this interval and this interval. Right here, it's the steepest, steepest. Let's put ST. So let's look for this option. Where is it? So between 0 and 1 hours is our answer. Answer choice 1. Okay. So now in this question, we've got a piecewise function or a piecewise graph. The graph is right here. Right? <clears throat> now remember, uh, for less than 1, so if I put in values 0, 1, 2, 3, and negative 1, right, on all of them, 1, 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, negative 1, right? Now for greater than or equal to 1, the graph is square root of x and less than 1 it's the absolute value of x so we've got to look for this so below 1 we've got to look for the absolute value and beyond 1 and equal to 1 it's the square root of x so let's see what our shapes are so I, atta I attached the graph so look at this one so beyond 1 this is where we are this is where the curve starts, right? And before it, it should be this part. So let's look for this section where it's this straight line and then it starts curving, right? So it's obviously not choice one. It can be choice two. It is not choice three because it's not a curve and even choice four, so it's choice two, answer two. 
and you can individually draw these on your graph draw on gra on your calculator and then do this one on a calculator and see how they connect and then just choose the correct answer okay so for this question we have the situation a driver leaves home for a business trip and drives at a constant speed of 60 miles per hour for two hours her car gets a flat tire and she spends 30 minutes changing the tire so that means she's not moving at this spot right so whatever distance she's covered she'll be at that distance for 30 minutes then she removes driving and drives at 30 miles per hour for the remaining one hour until she reaches her destination on the set of axes below draw a graph that models this so we know that for the first part there are three parts right for the first part she is driving at 60 miles per hour for two hours so when our journey starts let's say we made a table t in hours and distance in miles So when it's zero hours, your distance is zero. When you're one hour away, you've obviously covered 60 miles, right? 60 miles per hour. So after two hours, how much has she covered? 120. That's your first part of the journey. For the second part of the journey, she's at rest. At rest for 30 minutes. That means she's not moving for half hour. And then for the third part, basically after two and a half hours right so two hours for the first part and then half hour over here so two after two and a half hours she starts moving again so she's traveling for another one hour so and she's going to cover 30 miles in that one hour so let's plot all these things that we have we know at zero at zero at one when time is one it's 60 when time is 2, it's 120. Then for half hour, she's at the same spot. And then for one hour, she covers another 30 miles. So that will bring her to 150. Right? At 3. So let's go to 3.5. Mark this. And then let's just join these points by straight lines. So there are three sections. So three straight lines. Right? So straight line number one and then straight line number two and then this will be up here sorry this point at 150 right so we don't need this section so let's see there is this okay let's draw the third line So just use pure logic to do questions of this. Uh, this is our graph. Half. All right, so we've got this question. Graph fx is equal to x squared and gx is equal to two to the power x. So this is given to us. For x is greater than zero. So that just means it's all positive values right on the set of axes below now whenever they give you a grid please just do this step this is really easy let's plug those in <clears throat> right so you've got zero one two three four five six or any set of values and then let's plot something over here Okay, so you got this. Now let's plug in values for x in the first equation. Now we know fx is x squared. So let's put some simple values. Let's put in these. What's the square of 0? What's the square of 1? Square of 2? Square of 3? Square of 4? Right? 
So let's plot this. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, 4, 16. And then draw a curve through this. You can obviously use a better tool to draw this curve, but something that gets you this curve. Okay? So we got our curve. Now we need the second graph, which is 2 to the power x. So plug in values again. So let's put in 0, 1, 2, 3, maybe 4. Yeah? So when I put in 0 over here, 2 to the power 0 is 1. 2 to the power 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, 3, 2 cube is 8, and 2 to the power 4 is 16. Let's plot these. At 0 it's 1, at 1 it's 2, at 2 it's 4, so that's a meeting point, and then at 3 it's 8. And at 4 at 16. So let's plug in these values over here. And at 4 at 16. So if I drew this graph, it's like this. And again, you can use a calculator to get the two graphs. Use your calculator. Or Desmos. Not just to draw it. Number of gallons used is on the x-axis, cost of gas is on the y-axis. We're looking for the gas sales in this question. So which statement can be justified by using the graph? If 10 gallons of gas was purchased, $35 were paid. Let's just see. At 10, where are we? Are we at 35 or are we beyond 35? So we are beyond, so therefore this is wrong. For every gallon of gas purchased, $3.75 was paid. Okay, let's verify this. So let's look for some points which we can easily read from our axis. It should be right here, this one. Wherever the two grids are intersecting and this would be our last point. So let's take any two points and find out the slope. So the slope is equal to change in y divided by change in x. Always vertical divided by horizontal. Let's make our right angle triangle. So how much is it changing in the x-axis? From 0 it's going to 4. So that's a 4 increase. And from 0 it's going to 15. Okay, let's plug in these values. So this is delta y. This is delta x. So it's 15 divided by 4, which is 3.75. So that justifies our answer. So let's check that. Before we give in our answers, let's just see what's happening with the other two. For every two gallons of gas purchased, $5 was paid. At two, we are beyond five, so that's not true. So let's cancel that. If zero gallons of gas was purchased, zero miles were driven. Is that true? So if you don't purchase any gas, you don't, can't drive. What if you already have gas in your car? Right? All right, so and also our relationship is between the cost and the gallons. Now there's no mention of miles, so that wouldn't be a good choice. So answer number two is our choice. So we have Jan 2016, question two. The table below shows the cost of mailing a postcard in different uh, years. During which time interval did the cost increase the greatest? So basically, they're asking for the greatest slope. Now, we remember that slope is change in y divided by change in x. So take any two periods that they mentioned and let's find the slopes for all of them. 
Now choice 1 says 1898 to 1971. So that's an increase of $5 in the y-axis. Let's see the number of years from 1898 to 1971. So that's a 73-year period. So the slope for answer choice 1 would be 5 divided by 73. Now let's do it for the second set from 1971 to 1985 so that's a 14 year change right and it's increasing by $8 wow so 8 over 14 and then our third choice is 1985 to 2006 so let's do this so $10 this is $8 from 85 to 2006, that would be 21 years. So $10 in 21 years. And then the last choice is from 2006 to 12, which is six years. And the increase is, and the increase is of $11. So that would be 11 divided by six. So we just have to figure out which value is the greatest. So let's find the numerical value. So these are our values. You can use a calculator. 0 0.06 for the first one, 0.57 for the second one, 0.48, and 1.383. Which one's the largest one? Answer choice four. So in this question, uh, we've been given a graph and we are looking for a function from 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is less than the one shown. So the minimum value of marked it already is at negative 7. So any graph which has a minimum value less than 7 is what we are looking for. So I'm going to uh, use, the, use the graphs and paste them here and see which one has the value lesser than what is given okay so let's start with uh, our first choice x squared minus 2x minus 10 sorry this is the third choice so choice number three i'll post it in this so that's number three Right. Let's add some other ones. Let's add the other other ones. So that's choice number three. Then let's put in Choice number four, All right? And then let's put in now uh, choice one and two. So I attached all the four graphs. So one, two, three, four. This is one, two, three, four. And let's look at the minimum values right here. This one's signifying negative two. Over here, this is negative six. If you read this value. Over here, this is maybe negative 11. It's in between negative 10 and negative 12 and this one is in positive positive 2 so which one's lower than negative 7 number 3 so answer choice 3 so this question is asking you or showing you the average temperature of the earth's surface over 50 years 
and they've given you a temperature chart on the y-axis and the years on the x-axis so they're asking you where did the temperature vary the most and vary the most basically where is the slope the steepest okay so there are let's determine where is it steep so let's just look at the positive slopes anything that's going this way all right because if the line is horizontal this has zero slope and if the line is like this it's got negative slope so we don't need that those are not required right so let's look for the positive slopes anything in this direction okay so I'm going to uh, just draw lines and see which one is the steepest. We could obviously use the slope formula, delta y over delta x, that is one way. But uh, I can just join these points and say which one is the steepest. So this is one. This one is right here. And then I've got this one. So either you could do it numerically or show these lines. And which one's the steepest? Right here. This one. So from which years do we get the steepest slope? From 1975 till 2000 that's our steepest slope so the temperature has been increasing wow okay so the temperature variation is greatest from 75 to 2000 we can obviously find the slope for this. So how much is our y-axis increasing? Our value for delta y is from negative 0.1, it's going to 0.4. So that's a 0.5 increase. And from 75, it's going to 2000, which is 25 years. So 0 0.5 divided by 25, sorry. And let's solve that value. 0 0.02 degrees. Very good. That's the change in the Earth's temperature over the past 50 years. So in this question, we have uh, the cost of belonging to a gym can be modeled by this function. Cm is equal to 50m plus 79 and a half dollars, where Cm is the total cost per m months of membership. State the meaning of the slope and y-intercept of this function with respect to the cost. Now we have this form, right? And if you recall the standard form, the slope intercept form for any straight line as y is equal to mx plus b, or I'll write it over here, mx plus b. Where this is your x-axis and this is your y-axis, right? And your slope is m, so this is our slope, which is right here, right? And our y-intercept is over here. Okay, so we've got those. So our slope, what does this mean, 50? We know m is the number of months. So you're joining a gym. So We'll have gym membership, 
and we'll have a monthly cost. So M right here, the slope, which is $50, is the membership cost per month or the monthly membership fee. Membership fee per month. Okay. What about uh, the intercept, the buy intercept? What is that? What is B? Just seventy nine and a half dollars. That's your initial fee or joining fee. If you ever join a gym at some point in time, you might have this initial fee that they charge you. So that is this value. And every month you've got to pay an extra $50. So this is how this question is solved. So we've got this question where we are saying the line represented by the equation 4y plus 2x is equal to 33.6. Share the solution point with the line represented by the table below. So we know that they shared one solution. So let's put in these values in this. So this is your y value, this is your x value. So if we plug in all these values, there's just one of them which will work out, right? So solve this part. And see if it solves to 33.6. So in each case, This is the only one that solved to 33.6, so our answer choice is 4. There are various ways to do this. You could draw the two graphs and see where they intersect. If you would like, that's the other approach. So we've got to draw this graph. Y is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 1. Again, you may choose to use a calculator or Desmos to solve this. I'm going to make a table just because uh, we can use this set of values and then plot it. So let's start with a few values that we would like to choose. So maybe start with negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And let's put these in. So let's start with zero because it's the easiest to work with. So if I put in zero everywhere, I get zero squared minus four times zero minus one, which gives me a negative one. Then if I put in a one, I get one minus four minus one. So that's negative four. Then when I put in two, I get four minus eight minus one, which gives me a negative five. And then 3 will give me 9 minus 12, which is negative 3, and minus 1, which is again negative 4. Now, if I go the other way, I get negative 1 squared, which becomes positive 1, plus 4, which is 5, minus 1 is 4. And then negative 2 squared will give me 4, plus 8, which is 12, minus 1, which is 11. And if I want to work with the negative 3, I can but let's see if we can infer all these values. So I'll stop here and I'll start plotting. So whenever you see a grid, just plug in these values. So one, two, three. Because this is needed. Don't just draw randomly. They will not give you points for the random. Randomization is not what we are looking for. Exactness is what you want to work for every time. Okay, let's put in these negative 2 is 11. So that won't show, but negative 1 is 4. So then we have 0, negative 1, 1, negative 4, 
2, negative 5, and then 3, negative 4. And so we get a shape, right? So let's draw this. And if I put in 4 so that I can get another few set of values. So I'll get 16 minus 16 minus 1, which is negative 1. So let's even put that up here. So you see how this, these graphs are symmetrical, by the way. So the next value, if I went for it, I can predict that it would be a 4. Let's check. So if I put 5, I would get 25 minus 20, which is 5 minus 1 is 4. There you go. So let's draw this graph. Now we got this, right? This is our graph. This is the shape that you're looking for. And this is how you would present your work, okay? Now they're looking for the line of symmetry, a line that cuts this graph into two equal parts. Now the line of symmetry always passes through the vertex. And the vertex for this graph is down here. This is your vertex, where the graph turns. Let's draw a line through it. Right there. So, any vertical line has this equation. This is where it cuts x is equal to 2. So that's the equation of the line of symmetry. x is equal to 2. Okay, so we've got this question that uh, Sue and Kathy were doing their algebra homework. They were asked to write the equation of the line that passes through this. So whenever we have been given two points, we need two things, right? For any equation of the line or even with one point, we need the slope and we need one set of points, right? So for two points, we'll find the slope, just change in y and change in x. So negative three, four, and six and one. So from four, your point is dropping to one. So 1 minus 4, that's a negative 3 decrease, right? And then let's check this. From negative 3, it's going up to positive 6. So that's a 9 increase. So your slope is negative 1 third, right? And then remember the one of the forms we discussed where it, we gave this y is equal to y minus y1 is equal to mx minus x1 where these are our coordinates. So put in uh, six and one over here, and we know this value is one third, we just found it. So let's put six and one. This is our y one, this is our x one. So y minus one is equal to negative one third x minus six, right? Or let's put in the other point. So we get y minus 4 is equal to negative 1 third x minus minus 3. So do you see this in the question itself? We see that Sue wrote this equation. So she's correct as per our working, right? So this is why Sue is correct. So she used this. And then let's see if we simplify everything and write it in the uh, slope intercept form, do we get what Cathy got? So let's simplify this equation. Let's distribute, right? So get negative one third x. What's negative one third times three? That is negative one. We don't need to multiply right here, but it's negative one, right? And on this end, we have y minus 4. 
Now let's move the negative 4, add 4 on both sides. This cancels, so we are left with y is equal to negative 1 third x plus 3, which is what Kathy is getting. Therefore, both students are correct. They are just representations of the same equation. So we've got this question. During a recent snowstorm in Red Hook, New York, Jamie noted that there were 4 inches of snow on the ground at 3 p.m. and then there were 6 inches of snow on the ground at 7 p.m. If she were to graph these data, what is the slope of the line connecting these two points represent in the context of this problem? So let's just plot it. So let's put time here. Hours or time, just time. Let's not put a unit. Okay, PM. PM. And over here, uh, snow in inches. So let's say at uh, 12 noon, then 1, 2, 3 p.m., then 4, 5. and then 7 p.m. and uh, let's just go up by 2 inches every time so at 3 p.m. they're saying that there were 4 inches of snow and at 7 p.m. there were 6 inches of snow so that's our straight line now let's create a right angle triangle so what's the change in the vertical axis from 4 it's jumping up to 6 so there's a two increase, sorry. Two inches have increased over a time span of four hours. So our slope would be delta by over delta x. Just so two and four. Now this is two inches of snow. This is four hours of time. So, what will our answer finally be? Half inch per hour. That's what our slope represents. Half inch per hour. So that's how much snow came every hour. Okay? So this question, June 2016 question five, wants us to do a few things. It wants us to draw this graph. And then it wants us to draw these graphs. 2x plus 1 and 2 minus x squared. And they've given us a range. So this is from x is uh, 0 to 1. Let's write it at a different spot. Let me move this so that I can also it on my screen. So, they want us to draw this second graph, fx is equal to 2x plus 1, for x is less than negative 1, so any value below negative 1, we'll use this function, and then 2 minus x squared for anything greater than negative 1, right? So let's plot these, let's put in values, so gx, let's take maybe 0, 1, 2, Put it in that. Let's take 0, 2, and 4. Remember that denominator thing I said, use multiples of 2. So let's remove this value. And let's put in 4. So if I put 0, I'll get half times 0 plus 1, which gives me 1. And then when I put 2, half times 2 is 1, plus 1 is 2. Then when I put 4, I get half times 4, which is 2 plus 1 is 3. 
then let's plot this for different set of values so fx per anything below negative 1 or equal to negative 1 so let's take two values for any straight line you just need two values let's take negative 1 and negative 2 so what do we get for fx if I put negative 1 I'll get 2 times negative 1 which is negative 2 plus 1 will give me negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1 and then when I put negative 2 in my function 2x plus 1 I'll get 2 times negative 2 which is negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3 so I get that spot right let's change the color to blue so I'm gonna draw these in blue and the other one in red right okay and then beyond negative 1 it follows this function 2 minus x squared so let's take these values 0 1 2 3 maybe even 4 and we'll see how, what, how much can we fit in so if I put 2 minus 0 squared I'll get 2 then I'll get 2 minus 1 which is 1 then I get 2 minus 4 which is negative 2 then I'll get neg 2 minus 9 which is negative 7 and 2 minus 16 which is negative 14 let's plot all these things let's mark these remember you've got to mark this okay that way then you can get some points for your work don't just draw random shapes we are looking for exact values so it takes a few seconds it's a very easy task it's like asking a child hey can you count till five on your fingers something like that it's just a process so let's plug it in and now let's draw a graph so let's draw gx first at zero it's one just here at uh, two it's two and at 4 it's 3 so let's draw a straight line so we get this straight line right this is GX and then let's draw the second part of the graph so let's draw the straight line part for uh, for uh, fx where it's 2x plus 1 so we had negative 1 and negative 1 which is down here and then we had negative 2 and negative 3 and this is inclusive so I'm gonna shade this part right so let's draw this line So I know this this is fx and then we've got the second part uh, where they say 0 is 2 and then 1 is 1 and then 2 is negative 2 and 3 is negative 7 so we get this part and if I put a negative 1 for this, I would end up getting 3, which would be up here. So let's even plot that. If I put negative 1, I'll get a 3. Let's put that on this. You know, yes. So that would be up here. Now this is not inclusive, so I'm going to show it as a shaded, not an unshaded circle. So this is my second part of the graph so one part shaded this one is not shaded remember this is not uh, a function because if you drew the vertical line it cuts the blue graph at two times two spots so how many values of x satisfy the equation fx is equal to gx so what we are looking for is how many times this is our question how many times 
do fx and gx intersect or meet how many times do we see that right here just this one point so we will say one point of intersection so you see how these graphs can be done easily just by plugging in values or by using your calculator or Desmos and you'll be able to solve all of this. For the Regents exam you'll need the calculator but in class you can use Desmos. All right, which chart could represent the function f x is equal to negative 2x plus 6. That's what we are looking for. So what I did was I just uh, used Desmos to give me this table right here. All right? So we've got the table up here. So let's check which ones work. So at zero we need six. So it's either this or this. At two we need two. At four we need negative two and negative six. Answer choice four. What you would do is put this in the calculator and go to table and then check which ones work and you'll get your answer, answer choice is 4. So we've got August 2016, question 2. Okay, so we've got this question. Let's put this in here. So it's Fn, it's a functions question. Uh, so the function is given to you, which statement is true? So let's uh, just plug in the values and see which ones work. So for the first one, let's put in three over here and even here and even over here, right? So F3 is equal to three minus one whole squared plus three times three. And let's see if it's negative two. If it is, it's true, otherwise it's false. So. 3 minus 1 is 2 squared plus 9. 4 plus 9, 13. That doesn't work. Let's check 2. Put in negative 2. Okay. So negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3 squared minus 6. So 9 minus 6 is 3. Okay, that works. Let's mark that. Let's just go through the other ones and see if those work. F negative 2 will not work at negative 15 because it's the same function. And let's see if uh, F negative 15 works. So if I put negative 15 here, I get negative 16 when I subtract 1. So negative 16 squared is 256 minus 45 this will not give me negative 2 as they are showing right so it's answer choice 2 so we've got august 2016 question 3 so the height of a rocket at selected time that's shown in the table below so we've got our time we've got our height based on these data which statement is not a valid conclusion is what we are looking for the rocket was launched so anything that falls is what we are looking for the rocket was launched from a height of 180 feet time is zero that's when you're launching right that's when the launch happened As, and the height was 180 so this is true the maximum height of the rocket reached occurred three seconds after launch so let's look at the maximum value it shows 324 which is the highest point so that is true 
The rocket was in the air approximately 6 seconds before hitting the ground. Now this level and this level, we do not know if uh, this is ground level, right? This just means that maybe this is ground and you're firing the rocket from 180 feet above the ground. So this is the motion, right? So it's 68 above the ground. It's maybe somewhere here. This could be 68 feet above the ground. So it's still not at the ground. So that one's false. Right? And the last one they sank for approximately 2 seconds, which was about 300. So that's the answer choice 3 is false. So I pasted everything on this question. So we are looking for the slope where it's negative 3. Now in the first case, you see a change of 1 in the x-axis right here and a vertical change of 3 in the y-axis. So if you divide the two values, you get positive 3. In the second choice right here, you see that uh, there is a negative 3 for the first two coordinates, but then when you take the second and the third coordinate, you get negative 7. In the third case, it's negative 3 and divided by 1.5. But in the fourth case, if you divide each value by 2, you get y is equal to negative 3x plus 5. So you end up getting the slope. So answer choice is 4. So August 2016 question 5 just simply asks us to draw this graph that's listed above. So just go to your calculator and enter the equation. You'll get a shape. Go to your table and copy that table and uh, you'll end up getting your graph. Plot the points and your solution ready. which is right here right you'll get your graph you've got the table on the side right here this is your table use these values and plot and see even they are showing the grid look at that if they just wanted you to draw it without a grid they would have shown that right so let's put in these uh, grid values and you'll be able to uh, plot the graph so we've got this question about a graph of average resting heart attacks as shown below. The average resting heart rate for adults is 72 beats per minute. Sounds like music. But doctors considered resting rates from 60 to 100 beats per minute within normal range. So now we've got a graph at zero, it's at 112. And remember that unshaded means that it's not included okay. and the heartbeat is over here the beats per minute right and the age is over here so we've got a few things so at 20 it's at 72 and at 50 it's also at 72 beats per minute so which state about resting heart rates is not supported by the graph? So a 10 year old, which is up here, has the same average resting heart rate as a 20 year old. Is this the same as this? These two values are not the same. Like, what is this? This is above 90, maybe 92, 95, let's say 92. And right here it's at 72. So they are not the same. So this one does not support it. 20 year old has the same average resting heart rate as a 30 year old. So a 30 year old is here. So is it the same value of 72? It is the same value, right? So that works. 
40 year old has the same average resting heart rate for 10 years so 40 is over here and 50 is here so that's a 10 year period so that works the teen the average resting heart for teenagers steadily decreases so in the teens you're somewhere between 10 and 20 right 13 through 19 so it's decreasing here so that works. So which one does not work? One. So it's answer choice one. So in this question, in attempting to solve the system of equations, so there are two equations. Y is equal to 3x minus 2 and 6x minus 2 y is equal to 4. John graphed the two equations on his graphing calculator. Because he only saw one line. John wrote that the answer to the empty to the system is the empty set, which means that there is no solution. Is he correct? That's what we are trying to find out, right? And explain your answer. Now we can plug this in our calculator, right? And get a straight line, which is right here. So I drew this one. This is y is equal to three x minus two. Right? Now for the second equation for this one, 6x minus 2y is equal to 4. To plug this in the calculator, our restriction is that the calculator only offers this option, that it's y is equal to something. So let's make y the subject. I've uh, done a few uh, questions of this nature and whenever we see something connected with the y, we'll divide every element or every part of our equation by that value. And the reason is to make this a y. So now we got this as y. What's 4 divided by 2? It's 2. What's 6 divided by 2? 3x, right? 6x divided by 2 is 3x. Now we can move the y part, right? So let's add y on both sides. So this will cancel, we'll get 3x is equal to 2 plus y. But we need y, so let's subtract 2. Get 3x minus 2. So look at this and compare it with this. Is it the same equation? Right? So shouldn't you get the same answer for both of them? Right? If you're drawing the same equation, shouldn't you get the same answer? You should get the same answer. That's why he's saying that, hey, there's no solution to it. So is he correct? Yes, he is correct. He is correct. And why? Because the two equations are exactly the same okay okay this is our next question a family is traveling Jan 2017 question 3 that's what we are working on a family is traveling from their home to a vacation resort hotel the table below shows the distance from home as a function of time so when time is 0 its distance is 0 when time is 2 distance is 140 when time is 5, it's 375, and when it's 7, it's 40. Determine the average rate of change between 2 hours and 7 hours, including units. So, now, remember, whenever they say average rate of change, they're just saying what's the slope, right? slope. So that's just the change in y divided by change in x, which is delta y divided by delta x. Now at 2, when time is 2, the distance is 140. When time is 7, the distance is 480. So what's the change in the distance and the time? <coughs> 
so let's do the change whenever we talk about change we're talking about difference right so difference so that's what we are looking for so 480 minus 140 and 7 minus 2 so let's plug in these values so we get 340 divided by 5 right now when we divide 340 what is 340 representing the distance which is in miles right and the time is in hours they want the units so they're saying hey what are the units for it so say 340 divided by 5 is 68 miles per hour maybe something you've been familiar with the slope or in simple terms what does this represent the speed right so the family is traveling at 68 miles per hour okay something we use every single day okay so that's how you're gonna solve this question so whenever they give you average rate of change they're asking you for the slope remember that and the slope has this formula change in y divided by change in x all right so we've got this question jan 2017 question four we've got two graphs so fx is equal to the absolute value of x and gx is equal to negative x squared plus x on the grid below so insert these in your calculator or on desmos to get in uh, this thing fx is equal to absolute x on your calculator hit this option for math and then go to number and then you'll see abs as an option with the parentheses so you put an x and you'll get the absolute value of x which is the blue graph right here this is fx is equal to x and this is gx is equal to negative x squared plus 6 right and then they're saying is uh, f negative 2 equal to g negative 2 so what do you think is it the same use your graph to explain why or why not so you say it is a point of intersection Therefore, they are equal. Alright. Okay. Next, we have this question. Alex launched a ball into the air. The height of the ball can be represented by the equation h is equal to negative 8t squared plus 40t plus 5, where h is the height right here in units. And uh, T is the time in seconds, which is right here, after the ball was launched. Graph the equation from T is equal to 0 to T is equal to 5. So you can put this equation in your calculator, and you'll get a shape. And then you get values from the table, which I wrote down over here. So let's fill in these blanks. So let's mark this as 0. I just need the positive section of time, because it can never be in negative. And I've got all this space, right? So uh, I can mark uh, one as big as I want to. Maybe even four lines can represent one. So let's try that. So if I count one, two, three, four, and I mark one, then one, two, three, four, and I mark two, and one, two, three, four, three, one, two, three, two. We want to show a large representation of it, so it makes it easier, gives us a better visual perspective about what is happening, right? And let's, now we've got to reach a maximum of 53, so keep that in mind, we've got to get to 53, right? So we're trying to get to 53. So if I bent up by one, 
I probably won't get there. But if I went up by maybe two, it depends if I've got 25 lines or 26 lines. Let's use five. And mark these. Don't leave your work blank. You get points for all this. Okay? So we can show a representation of our work. So 0 is 5, 1 is 37, so it will be between 35 and 40, so I'll mark it here. 2 is at 53, which is between 50 and 55, and then 3 is the same value, which will be here. And then at 4, I come back to 37, which is here. And at 5, I'm back at 5. So this is the shape I'm getting. And this is what I want you to do in your exam. Right? And don't rush. Rush is always going to get you into trouble. Be smart with what you're doing. So that's our graph.